Hi guys, this is Mike Hibbert back with another Python Django tutorial for you. Um, this time around we're going to take the idea of forms and extend it a little further than we have done in the last two tutorials. Um, previously we looked at registrations and how to register a user using the existing form that the user uh, management system already contains. Then we looked at how to extend that and include a bit more information in that. This time we're going to look at how forms can be made for the the uh, data models that you've been created in the very very early part of this series of uh, tutorials. So we're going to take a look at the article um, model that we created way back when when we first started, um, and we're going to build a form for that so that um, we can then create articles using our web pages now you can already do this through the admin pages um, but for the sake of showing how this actually works and perhaps you know later extending into a, a situation where you can have someone post their own blog but never actually really need to go into the admin system um, for security reasons that's a great idea and if we all you need, ever need to do is make a blog or an article on the page then why should they be accessing that part of the site so this is an ideal way of us to to get stuck into forms and extending our models and making them so that they can take advantage of the forms system which vastly simplifies the idea of getting information off your web pages and into the database so let's take a look at this article model that we've made as you can see we've got the title the body, the published date, and the number of likes on the article. Um, we're going to set the number of likes to the default of none, uh, because literally if it hasn't been published yet, nobody's had the chance to like it. So that's the, the breakdown of the article model that we've created. So we need to extend um, this by making ourselves a form. So I'm just going to quickly navigate to where we need to get to in our Python folder over here. There we go. So we've got our article folder, which is where we've been keeping our article module or our article app, as Django likes to call it. And inside, inside here, we're going to create a file called forms.py. Now, if you remember correctly from the last time in the Django test folder, we also created a forms.py file there, and that's the one that contains our user registration. But for the sake of keeping everything in one module, we're just going to create a separate forms.py file here, which will be specific to this whole article package. So, We've created our forms.py file in there. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by importing the forms module from Django. So this will give us the basics of how to use forms and how to extend the forms framework to include our articles model. The next thing we do is actually import our article model so that we can make a reference to it and ensure the, the form definition or the this class definition what the actual model is that is going to be related to this form. The next step is to create ourselves a new class which extends from forms model form which is a form specifically made to deal specifically with models. Um, there are a few other different types are in, in there so that there's you know, all sorts, and if you want to go and Google and find out what other things are available, there's some pretty useful stuff in there, so I, I recommend you do that. So, the next part is to have a look at our old meta class, which, if you remember in the last tutorial, we used that to define anything that wasn't actually a form field. So, in this case, our meta class is going to contain details about the model that's related to this form so that it knows whenever it pulls info information in that it needs to use the article model 
to save or update this information. Okay, so that's the basics of how we link the two together. So this form now knows that it's bound to that article. So there's a couple of other things that we need to now do to, to start using it. So we're going to uh, create a new page. So we need to bring in bring in a new URL so that we can actually uh, link in a view that's going to let us create a new article on the page. So we're just going to create a, a create URL, which links to our articles, views, create method, which is inside of our views file. Now, there are a number of things we need to do before we create the view. So we need to bring in a couple more modules that will help us in, in actually dealing with the way that the view works. Um, so the first one, obviously, is our article form. We need that in so that we can then tell our view what to display. In the same way as we imported our registration view in the last tutorial, we're going to pass this through as a form for the, for the template to render. The next bit is we're going to use our recently um, announced or the thing we've recently got to know the HTTP response redirect because once we've finished saving our data we're going to redirect to the list of articles page so that we can see that it's actually updated in the database and been added to the list of articles. Next we've got our CSRF uh, handling module so that we can have more security on the page and make sure that we're not getting abused by uh, hackers on the internet. Now, here's our create view right on the end. So we've already got articles and article and language because we were messing around with language settings and showing how to use various bits and bobs to do with setting cookies and sessions. Um, Little note to anyone who got confused by this. Um, if you don't know what cookies and sessions are, you're probably better off going and learning what they are before you look at that tutorial because someone got a little confused between these two and didn't and wondered why we were using both at the same time. And of course we weren't. We were just demonstrating how to use them. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so we've got our create view. We're going to check to see if the post array has been opened, like we did with the user registration form. And if it, if it has got information in there, we're going to create ourselves an article form using the request post array or dictionary. Thinking in PHP there, sorry. So then we're going to check, is it a valid form? Has, has, is the information inside of that form correct? And if it is, we're going to save it. And then we're going to use our HTTP response redirect to redirect through to the articles all URL, which will show all of our articles, including the newly created one. If there is nothing in the post array, we're just going to create a bog standard form, an article form. And then we're going to set up our CSRF request token so that we can build our form securely and then pop the form into the arguments to be rendered in the template and then of course yet again we use our render to response uh, function to speed things up by passing our arguments through to our template which is called create article okay Gonna save that. Let's take a look at the create article form. As you can see, it simply extends the base HTML like all of our other templates have. But this time we've extended the block sidebar. Now, if you don't remember what that was, I'll just quickly take you there. It's this little area here. It's just the, the bit we use to, to put some hyperlinks in there so we can navigate around the article system. So this is the block sidebar that we've overridden because we're going to put a cancel option into our add or create article page. 
So if you're not happy that you don't want to create an, an article, you just got to click that link and it'll take you back to the list of articles that are already created. But here's the most uh, important part of the, the system just here. So we've got a form that has an action of create. So it posts back to the URL it was created from or rendered by rather. And it's going to post back using the method post. There's our CSRF token. And here's something a little different that you have, you might not be aware of with forms is that you don't necessarily have to just render the form on its own. You can ask it to render itself in various little ways. So for instance, I've said as UL, I can also ask it to render as P for paragraph and table. But in this case, I'm going to say UL and then everything inside of these URL tags should come out as LI tags or wrapped in LI tags. And that will help with the formatting on the page, which you'll see later on. Um, and then finally, just a submit button to say create article. So we've set our URLs, we've made our view and we've told it how to process the information that's in there. We, before we did any of that, we went to our forms area and we created a form art, a form class that knows that it's bound to the article model. So by default, this article model knows how to save and, and retrieve information for all four of these columns that we've got. The final thing that we're gonna do is we're going to update our articles HTML page. Now, the reason why we're going to do that is because previous to this, we haven't had an option to create an article. So we're just going to add in a link in the, the sidebar at the top left hand corner of the web page, just so that we can say, I want to create a new um, article. And then that will take us to the new page that helps us to create the article. So with that extended, we can now go ahead and run the web server. That's my phone going off. Sorry about that. So this is what you should see if you followed all the other previous tutorials, but now with the addition of a create article link that I've created by overriding the sidebar in our articles template. If I click that, you should now see that the form now renders itself with a title, a body, a published date. And if I try to submit that with nothing in it, I should get this field is required for all of those fields. Now, you might have noticed there that it's rendering the likes option. We don't want that to be used because obviously that's a that's going to be a, a thing that is used at a later stage in the website's lifespan. It's going to be the way we store and record the amount of likes that this article might have gotten. So we don't want to set the value for that to start with and the simplest simplest way to, to stop that from happening is to, is to just not show it on the page so how do we not show some of these fields the way that we do that is we establish um, a list of valid or, or displayable fields within our form and then our form form will know that that's what we want to do and it'll ignore the ones we don't include so I'm just going to stop the web server and we'll go back to our form definition just here and in our meta class we're going to add a new row or a new field it's called fields and it's it's what you saw in our user registration system um, in the last tutorial but this time we're going to only include the ones of the names of the fields that 
from our model that we want to include. So we've got our title, our body, and our publish date, and no likes field. And that should be enough to tell our system that we don't want to be able to edit or update the likes system in this way, not through this form anyway. So if we now restart the server, go back, <coughs> excuse me, we now see there's no likes um, field there for editing. So what can we do? Um, let's see. I don't know, creatively and imaginatively titled test seven and some various random keystrokes just to say there's some text in our text box or body and a date in that format. Now, if we click create here, that takes us to our newly created list, or rather not our newly created list, but our, with our list with our newly created article on there which of course we can link through to from our previous links that we've installed. So that's the basics of how to then extend your models and start making the information in your database editable through the web pages. Like I said earlier, you can do this through the admin system, but obviously sometimes you don't necessarily want every user on your website having access to your admin system. You might just want people to be able to post a few comments or you know if you're building something like i don't know facebook then you may not want anybody in your admin system you may just want them to be able to put status updates on their pages so this is the way to go for that if you're, if you're wanting to update that sort of information or create small comments and such on the pages create yourself a form for the model that you've created that handles all of that information and it'll vastly simplify everything for you rather than you to have have to create all of the HTML that you would have made for this form as you can see all we've really done is added in the form model or the form module rather and told it how to render itself okay so that's the end of this tutorial I hope this um, gave you something to think about and uh, perhaps you learned a little bit about the Django system. Um, if you enjoyed this video then please click the like button. If you want to see more in, this, in the series then uh, click the subscribe button and uh, you'll be updated as soon as there's a new one out. Thanks for watching.